Hey guys, it's Jenny with Go Box and Van Gogh Artist Bar and Studio. Today we are painting a holiday theme painting, the Red Truck. Very classic, super popular in the studio last year. Uh, people wanted this painting every single day of the month because every single class sold out. And I can see why it's it's actually really adorable. I like the, the little um, pops or, pop of red there against that bluish gray background. And the little Christmas tree on there makes it all come together nicely. And so that's what I'm going to teach you today. Lucky for you, you have a template to trace because I wouldn't uh, make you guys draw this truck. <laughs> that would be really hard and the painting would probably take about five hours. <laughs> today I think it'll probably, I'm going to guess, I'll guesstimate about two hours for this painting so make sure that you um, are ready to take that time or just pause the video and come back another day to finish it up. Um, let's talk about supplies. So I'm going to switch now to a zoom in mode. There we are. So each of you, when you ordered the kit, you received a 10 by 10 birch panel. I love painting on these. They're really fun and unique compared to canvas. If you're only used to painting on canvas, you're gonna be in for a treat. A lot of people love painting on wood better. So I'd be curious to know how you guys feel when you're done. And then each of you received in your kit the template for the truck and bonus, I <laughs> put the moon on there too. Um, actually for this, getting a perfect circle, tracing it can be a little difficult. It probably won't turn out perfectly round. But if you have like a, this is about the size of like a vitamin bottle um, or even a pill bottle. <laughs> Maybe with pandemic, we all have lots of pill bottles <laughs> around. <laughs> so yes, if you wanna trace a circle, it doesn't have to be this exact same size. It could be slightly smaller or larger. And uh, then each of you received graphite paper. This is what we're going to use to transfer this onto this. And let's talk about our paint colors. Just the primary colors with black and white. That's all we use with this painting, which is, is kind of nice because then we don't have to fill up our palette in a huge way. Um, you have your black and white. We have red, phthalo blue, which is just a deep dark indigo blue, and then this craft yellow, which I love because it's really opaque and yellow paint can be troublesome, but I really like this one. Uh, let's talk about brushes and water. So you'll need a, a little old, old mug or some kind of cup of water to wash your brushes in, a paper towel or an old rag to dry them off after you wash. And then I have, different brushes. So I, I usually use three. I have a large brush, it's about a one inch wide flat wash brush, a middle size brush that's either round or flat, it doesn't matter. And then some kind of round little detail brush. I might use, I don't know, I might flip back between the two just, just for fun. This is a new brush that I just picked up, but I kind of like it. I want to see how that goes. All right, so let's get started. So you'll want to have a piece of tape handy. Um, if you don't have any tape in the house, you can you can just hold this on with your hand, but having the tape helps. So if you need to pause me and grab a piece of tape, masking tape or scotch tape, it doesn't matter. I just had a little piece of scotch tape here, or I'm sorry, masking tape. And then you're going to take your template and you line up this corner with the corner of the board. And that puts your truck right where it's supposed to be on here. And the moon as well. Oops. Okay. So now I'm going to tape this down just to sort of anchor it in place. And then your graphite paper, um, it is folded with the, this is the part that's gonna transfer the design to your board. So the shiny side will go down, shiny or darker side, and you don't need to tape this down. It's okay if it moves around a bit. One thing I do wanna talk about is try not to rub this around too much because the graphite on here will transfer onto the board, which a lot of it gets painted over, but it it's kind of makes it nicer if it doesn't transfer over, all over the board. And then I have a pencil. You can use like a fine point Sharpie. A lot of people like to use like a red fine point Sharpie so that they know what they've traced. I'm using a pencil, so I just have to guess as I go along. Um, what I tend to do when I have a template to trace is I'll, I'll kind of start at 12 o'clock and work my way clockwise around. And I usually will forget something. So every once in a while I might check and see. But let's go ahead, let's start with the moon. Yeah, let's start with the hardest part. <laughs> Just 
trace. You don't have to press super hard. When we paint the white part of the moon on, I'll show you how to sort of haze out the edges if your circle is kind of imperfect, which even though we're tracing a circle, it can be a little lumpy. Let's check. Yeah, see that? That's lumpy. And so um, I pressed probably a little too hard, but my white paint, I'll, I'm just gonna have faith it's gonna cover that up. So you can see how easy it is to transfer. You don't, I'd say the light touch is the right touch, at least up for the moon. I think for the truck, it's okay to have it be a little darker. So let's start up here. You can use a ruler if you like, but I think having these lines be maybe a little wobbly. See how I'm going all the way down here? A little wobbly is probably okay. So I'm gonna trace all the outside edges first as I go around my clock face, and then I'll start working on some of the interior stuff. I can kind of see where my uh, pencil lines are, so I'll be able to go back. Now you can turn your board different directions if that helps. Just for now, focus on the outside stuff as I go inside. This is hard. All right, up and around. Here's the hood. And finally up to the windshield. So I traced all around the outside, forgetting about all the uh, wheel wells and all of that stuff. <laughs> I did start doing that just out of habit. Let's go to the window now. Start at the upper part, lightly trace. Let's go all the way down here. And let's see, I'll just finish off the window here and the door since they kind of go together. Little door handle, which we might end up painting that back on. It might not, it might get covered up by red and we can put it back on later. So, okay, so I've gotten all that. I can see my pencil lines. Now I'm gonna go along here for the bed of the truck. Let's go ahead and trace this little light here. And the bumper. Around the wheel well. And this part here, just above the tire. My tire I trace here at the bottom and it got a little lumpy, but we put snow pile up around the, the tires, so that's not a big deal for it to be lumpy. <laughs> All right, there's the wheel or the hubcap. Okay, so I already have traced there. Let's do this part. And I'm gonna do this wheel well here. And get this fender in here. I tried to keep this truck as easy as possible without it looking cheesy. We want it easy, but not cheesy. <laughs> so there were some things that definitely would be simplified. Like my dad paint, uh, draws and paints cars as a hobby, and he would make this completely realistic. I think I'm going to send him a kit to see what he does. He has a truck that sort of looks like this. It's a uh, 56 Ford F100, I think. And it's super cool and customized. It puts it in car shows all over. There we go. See, you can see <laughs> the tracing is not 100% like this, which is nice. And I did use a ruler for a lot of this, but that's okay. It's going to be a painting, so I'm not gonna stress about it too much. And we, paintings look a little different than obviously than real life photographs do. There's some charm with the brush strokes and all of that. And yes, that's my little line there too make you not worry about it. <laughs> okay, if you are still tracing, please feel free to pause the video and catch up. You can see my wheels are, or my, yeah, my tires are kind of, like this one looks a little flat, but like I said, let's bring this back over. See how we pile some snow up along the bottom? That won't even be an issue. 
Okay, we're gonna get ready to paint, so prep yourself for that. If you are partaking in a little wine, take a sip now. <laughs> it's early in the day here, it's just noon for me, and so I don't have wine right now. I should have gotten a coffee somewhere though. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we are going to glaze over the whole board with a, a wash of color. So that is a really thinned out with water uh, color and we're gonna go even right over the moon and right over the truck because our outlines will show through and if they don't we'll just kind of remake them I'm gonna fix up this just a little bit only because my OCD is making me gosh yeah I got some lines here that are a little out of I want to see how this erases sort of just curious on the boards I know on the canvas and paper it's it's tough <laughs> Tough to erase this graphite. So you're kind of locked in. I actually have a big pearl eraser. A little pearl eraser, I should say. It might work a little better. I'm only testing here. I should do that off camera. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's take our palette and let's mix up our color wash. So here's the picture. We want it to be, you can see this color up here. And it's a lot of water. So I'm gonna bring my water cup over. And I'm gonna dip my biggest brush in there. Instead of drying my brush on a towel, I'm gonna to plop some water down here. A little bead of water. And then I'm gonna pull a little tiny bit of blue. And if I painted just blue on there, that works. It's okay. It, it's kind of like it goes with the, the wood color and the blue together make it sort of a muted color. But I like to give it sort of a gray tone. So I'm gonna add a little white to this. You will likely run out and have to remix this more than once. So this made kind of closer to a sky blue wash. See how when I pull my brush through, the water just kind of beads up. You want it that wet. Now I'm gonna take my corner of my brush and pick up the tiniest little bit of black because the black will definitely overpower. And you see how now this is more of a grayed out, kind of almost slate shade. That's what I want. So that's the color I wanna glaze over and I can tell already I need a little more pigment to my water mix. So I'm gonna pull a little more of each color of paint in there. There we go, I like that color. This will provide a nice base. And we paint some clouds in here too. So it's not gonna be this sheer, oopsie, look at that. So I, I actually, that's kind of a happy little accident. Every once in a while you get a streak of color in there and to me it ends up just giving it more of a cloudy type of look without trying. Every once in a while you might, if you get, if this becomes too opaque, you might throw a drop of water in there. Well, mix a drop of water in there. And one thing on the boards, the water kind of collects on the sides here. But I just, as I work down, I'll occasionally go back as it's drying and brush those inward just so we don't have this collection of color here. So you should be able to see the wood grain through it, which it's hard to tell on this video screen I'm looking at. If I turn it a bit, you can kind of see. Treat it like you're uh, staining a piece of wood. So this is like a stain here, already running out. This is the part, this part of the painting. I did this yesterday on another painting that's very similar. It doesn't have a truck, it has a snowman. <laughs> but the start of it's very similar. It takes a bit. That was a little opaque, so I'm gonna just brush some water back over the top. So yeah, it takes a bit of time, this particular part. But hey, this is a bonus, you're learning how to do it like a deck stain. So if you need to stain your deck this next coming summer, you can say I taught you. <laughs> sort of. All right. I love the way that wood grain is popping through. Very nice. And this gosh, this water evaporates so fast. Just get a color similar. It doesn't have to be exactly the same each time, just similar. Because 
it's snowing out. The sky can change a bit here and there. There can be bigger patches of darker clouds. At least that's what you can tell the people who look at your painting. <laughs> Go right over the truck, but you do want to keep your outlines. So if you're losing outlines, it means you have too much paint. You need a little more water mixed in with this color. So you can see every once in a while I'm dipping my brush, picking up a little bit of water. So I just dip the very tip of the bristles in the water so I'm not grabbing a big glob of water. Just a bit at a time, back and forth. Smooth that out there. Here we are at the bottom. Don't pay too much attention to getting this all perfect down here because we do add some sheer white over that to create the snow base. Alrighty. So there we have it so far. You'll see your outlines. It's okay if they're a little dulled out, but as long as you can see them to trace this stuff later. Um, if you need to wash your brush, but if you had barely anything left on it, you probably don't have to. I'm gonna dry it off. So I don't want water in this next batch of paint so much. Just pull aside a little bit of white. So see, I have very little on my brush. I could even start with less than that, but mainly I don't want a super, um, large amount of paint here so that we don't go over our outlines. But let's start at the bottom. While the board is still wet, works perfect because you see how those two colors are mixing together. And it turns the snow kind of bluish, which since we're, we're dealing with a, a scene that's kind of at night here, or getting to be dark, we've got the moon out and everything, we wanna have the snow be not pure white. So as I get up to the truck, I'll be a little careful and just kind of test little batches to see if it covers too much. So you definitely want this to be on a pale blue, on the pale blue side. And I am going, I can still see my outlines back here. I know it looks like you can't on camera, but I definitely see it. So I'm going just right up to the truck, slightly outlining, I mean, slightly overlapping. That way it will look like the snowbank kind of goes behind the truck and not like you just stopped right as you got up there. Figure out where your horizon point should be. So on this painting, it really just sort of disappears. But if I were to pinpoint a horizon, it's just like maybe a quarter inch above the hood of the truck, kind of, sort of-ish. So I'll just use the thin edge of my brush and come up here and here. So it kind of, in the original painting, it sort of looks like this just dissipates into fog. Don't worry about your window, that gets painted sort of a gray color later. There. I went up a little higher than I said because I do like how that sort of dissipates into fog. We will add more white to this later on, but for now we've got a good white base going. Looks like I need a tiny bit more down here. I can still see the wood through. I mean, where I, a little strip of wood that I apparently missed the color. There, we've got a wacky truck in the fog and that will work for now. So if you're catching up, I'll probably say this a lot throughout the video, just to remind you that you can pause it. So if you're catching up, just pause it. I'm gonna move on here in just a minute. All right, so I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm going to create something that you probably never really noticed in the background of this painting, but it does give it more of a you're going through a thicket of woods sort of look. So back here, you can barely see it, but I have this weird little sound wave looking thing that creates the look of very sheer trees way back there. And then we paint these larger trees on. But this being back here, it definitely makes it look like, rather than like you're driving through an open field that has a few 
fir trees, there's actually woods back here. So it's just an extra thing that I chose to do when I made this painting. I probably could have left it off, but you know, I like to always go extra. <laughs> So let's talk about the color of that. We want this color, but a little darker. So we're not gonna want as much water in there. So I'm gonna pull aside some blue, pull aside some white, make a sort of pale blue color, and get a little black in there. You definitely want it to have a bluish tone to it, like that. But the black just sort of uh, neutralizes it a bit, makes it a little more on the uh, slate side. And now I'll, I'll add just a tiny bit of water. Just a little bit, and let's see how that works. So don't be scared, <coughs> excuse me, don't be scared of this part. A lot of people get terrified, but it gets, 95% of it gets covered up. Enough that I probably could have left it off. So I'm gonna use the thin edge of my brush and this is something, if you guys have painted with us before in the studio or on video, we do this tree line thing where we wiggle the brush up and down. And sometimes I go a little higher. Sometimes I come down a little lower just to create a forest line. Don't worry about the bottom. We'll fix that up. So just leave these weird gaps that show up. And then, yeah, we'll come through and we'll just sort of fix up the bottom of this so it looks more dense. That didn't look good. I'll blame the paper. <laughs> So I don't lift my brush at all. It's glued to the board. And, you know, this is probably evaporated a bit, so I'm gonna add just a little more water here. It goes right about the horizon area, so right about the middle of the board. I could add a little more blue to that. It's coming on just a tiny bit lighter than I wanted, so I just add a tiny bit more blue and black. Yeah, this is the color I wanted. It feels weird, I know. It feels like you're wrecking your board. You're not. And if you accidentally overlap the top edge of the truck, no problem. Work your way across. Where's my holiday music, Paul? You promised. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> We talked about putting some ho holiday music on the video. I guess you can edit that in. Yeah. <laughs> I like painting to music, but YouTube will pull our video or flag it if it has music that is um, recognizable, that is like not royalty free. And I understand why. It's just, uh, I didn't realize that the first year that we did these videos, one of my videos got pulled because I had very quiet music playing on my Bose speaker in the background. So they are definitely on, on it for checking that out. Checking up on the music. Okay, so now I'm gonna just sort of brush across the bottom if there's any like wood gaps showing through. And we're gonna touch up the bottom edge of this with snow. So right now it looks a little freaky. Don't worry about that. I want to show you the painting I did yesterday, which is set up very similar. In fact, this it was part of a series I did last year, although the one I did yesterday is slightly different than the one that I did. Can we just get out here? Glad I did it yesterday, so it was like a nice refresher. Here's the one I did. This is coming up as a kit you can order. Uh, it, video for this one will air on December 11th, so there's a little bit of a waiting time till the video comes through. But yeah, I just, I did that same tree line in the back and then we do these taller trees, but I love this. I think it's such a cute painting. Little snowman discovering the lighted tree back there. Okay, so yeah, it looks wild and crazy right now. This is where students in class, I can hear them questioning what I'm doing <laughs> or what they're doing. Like, this doesn't seem right. It looks like a bunch of weird grass in the background. Let's wash our brush. And you might, depending on the, how much area you have through here, you might use your middle size brush, which mine is right here. Maybe I'll try that. I'm gonna dip it in water just to get those bristles damp. Get this one out of here. Okay, so I'm gonna 
Take a little white on this brush, just a little at a time, like we did last time. Tiny bit, you can always add more. And I'm going to just go over the bottom edge of these trees. You can bring this white down just a bit. In fact, this is the same thing I did yesterday here. I created like a snowbank. You can see it looks it looks good. It looks like it's a snowbank sort of goes right up to these trees. And yeah, just a little bit of paint. Like I almost use a little too much here. So what I'll do with that is just let, let it mix with the, the bluish, wet bluish tree color and paint it down till my brush kind of runs out of paint. And as I'm going over and over this area where both colors are wet, they're blending together nicely. And it's not gonna be so in the face here. We'll add more of this later on down in here just to develop this area. But that will come later after we make the shadow under the truck and the tire tracks back here. So for now, did I mention that all paintings go through like an ugly phase? <laughs> I always say that when I am teaching in class. Almost every painting goes through a rough and borderline ugly phase as you're kind of working out the details like we're building from the inside out. So a lot of this that we're doing right now, it's important, but some of it gets covered up. And it won't, right now it's really noticeable, but later on when you, uh, have the truck all done and all the details. You won't even think about this part. You won't even see it hardly. While I've got this brush in the white paint, I'm going to go ahead and trace the moon. Now, if you need to use a small brush to do this, please feel free to do so. I find that turning my board or whatever painting surface you're using, if you're doing this on canvas or your own thing, I will turn it as I go along. I just have better luck getting a Good circle there. Don't paint the inside yet, so I'm gonna show you a trick. So you can see I'm sort of lining from the inside of the moon. It's just my preference. And like I said, smallest brush if you want. I'm just using a little bit bigger, the medium brush. So I've got it outlined. When I paint the inside of the moon, to get these little craters that you see here, I actually just leave some of the background showing through. So there is a thin layer of white over these dark spots, but there's thicker white around here. So that makes this sort of bluish, darker color show through. So I'm gonna just give this a real thin coat and let my brush run out of paint. and it's just about completely out. So I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more white. So this is what I would call like a dry brush technique. Very little water. I mean, your brush should be not, not saturated with water and very little paint. So I'm liking these thin spots showing through. It sort of is giving the impression of the moon with craters. I could leave it like that, and I might. I just might. So the trick I was talking about when we first started the painting about uh, getting the moon perfectly round, mine's pretty round. I can see there's a little flat spot here and there. One of the things I do sometimes uh, when we're doing a kind of wintry scene with the moon, obviously we've got snowfall coming down so it's not a clear night. That's why I paint these clouds in later because it didn't make sense to me to have a clear sky with snow coming down. And so what, to create this, uh, this moon to be, uh, I don't know where this, if you've got flat spots and whatnot and you're just having a really rough time trying to get a perfect circle, take a small amount of white on your brush and I'll just kind of brush around the outside edges here just to knock off excess paint. And then I coat around the outside, working outward, and I create sort of this hazy glow around the moon just with wet paint. I need more paint. It's not doing what I want. <laughs> it 
trying to do it with as little paint as possible. So I know this board just really grabs the paint. But see how I'm just going around and hazing out, softening out the edges of this. And that does not look good. I'm gonna take a little water. So here's what you can do. You can use a little water and you can use your fingertip and sort of smudge that out. Now that is only if you didn't like the first moon that you painted. I liked the first moon I painted, although it had a few flat spots, but this is an option. And then I'll go through and I'll paint some more brighter white in here. So if you've ever looked up at the moon on a foggy night, Sometimes it's like that where you don't see the super sharp edges. And that's our, that's our get out of jail free card <laughs> with painting a perfect circle. And if you don't like the way this looks, I'm the guinea pig here. <laughs> I'm the guinea pig here doing the experimental thing on camera. Uh, if you don't like the way this looks, you could, in all reality, just do a sharper moon again, but just make it larger. So these are just kind of like little light rays around the moon. I'm just using a little water on my brush and what residual white I have left. And that works. I kind of like that now a little better than what I had. So it's got a little Van Gogh feel to it. <laughs> I meant to do that. All right, so let's go ahead. You can work on your moon some more, pause the video. But I'm gonna move along and paint just some suggestion of just the top part of the clouds. I don't worry about painting any bottom of the clouds or anything like that. They're pretty easy. I just do these scooped scallop marks in white and I just come right down to the moon and this one even like slightly overlaps the bottom of the moon. So just follow along with me. Take the same brush, your medium brush. A little weight on the brush, but not a lot. I always start with very little. If you start with a lot, you got to figure out where, where it's all going to go. So here's what I'm going to do. Just going to do a few of these little scallop marks. So see, I showed you how much paint I had on my brush and it looked like barely any, but look how much is coming off. So here's what I do to uh, make it look more like a cloud. I'm brushing inward, so building it a little thicker until my brush runs out of paint and come right up under the moon. So very little, I, it looks like I have no paint on my brush, but it's there. And I'm brushing down until this just sort of runs out of paint. See all my brush strokes are kind of curly and the cool thing about this is you have that, just like when we did the moon, you have the areas of the background showing through. So these little areas. And that is just going to give your cloud a little more depth and dimension. So instead of being pure white, it's got, you can see shadows in it, which is what, how it would normally look. So again, look how much paint. Very little, tiniest amount. Start way up higher and then come, uh, let it just run out of paint as you come down towards the moon. And again, this is like dry brushing. Probably damaging my brush a little bit right now. In fact, I'm wiggling the table, I can see it, okay. And you could do another little bank of clouds down further. Keep your brush strokes circular. If you have a lot of paint on your brush right now and you're like, I don't know what to do with it all, just flatten your brush strokes out because clouds are flat on the bottom. I know as kids, we just draw them as like a big fluffy circle, but they are most of the time, unless it's like one of those big tornado clouds. Most of the time they're pretty flat on the bottom. So you, if you have too much paint on your brush as you're coming down, you're just flatten those brush strokes out. I feel like, even though this will probably get covered with a tree, I feel like I wanna put another little suggestion of a cloud here. Super cool effect and not, not a lot of hard work. I feel like clouds are a little bit easier on the wood than they are on a canvas. 
And anytime uh, you want to add, if you want to add a bit more bright white here and there, keep in mind this is a giant light bulb. So it's going to cast a bright light on the objects nearest to it. So like these little curves here that are closest to the moon would have a little more bright white. Don't overdo it though. You can see how subtle it is on this one. More subtle than I did it on this guy. Every painting's unique. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm okay with that. Now that the moon is dried, I might come through and I can see a spot here where the graphite smeared and it's kind of grayish. So I'll come through and just add a little more white paint. That looks okay. <laughs> I want to cover up one of these. I always feel like when you look at the moon, there's always like one side of it that has more craters than the other. And sometimes, most of the time it's accidental. Sometimes I'll end up with a really good painting of the moon and other times it's not so hot. Today's one of those days. It's not, not such a great um, painting of the moon. If you lose your cratery like the darker areas and it ends up pure white that's okay but if you want to bring some of that the crater color back you could take ah, i need more paint it dried you could take a little bit of the black blue and white color make it pretty pale i would mix a little white a little more white into it not a lot of paint in your brush so dab it on your towel if needed and you could dab on some more of these darker areas. And a lot of times I'll use my finger to just sort of smudge them out. Now the moon is something you can work on for days and days. Days and days and days after this painting's done because it's just there. There's nothing covering it in the painting. So you can always go back and just perfect it. I'm not loving mine today, but you know, there are just some days that are like that. I'll be one of those that works on it for days and days. <laughs> I am going to just leave it as it is and just call it good for now. And now, next step, these background trees, which I know you all hate. I just know it from teaching this painting in the past. <laughs> are gonna get covered up with some more foreground trees. So most of these are kind of a lighter color. They're actually very close to this color. And then we have one that, that's in the more uh, immediate foreground that's gonna be a little bit darker. So that gives it some depth and dimension. It looks like this is closer to you and these are further away. And these are all very, very simple. So in the past, teaching this, uh, we've taught it at a couple of restaurants and at the studio. We found the students spent way too much of their energy on these trees back here. And they're, they're important, but they're not super important. The most important thing is right here. This is what we want to expend our energy on. So keep these very simple and don't let your brain freak you out here because they, they look totally, these are so sloppy and so simple. And at first they, they don't look so great, but when we add the snow onto the top of them, they end up looking like trees. So I want, that's just my little, my little speech about keeping the trees very simple and not expending a lot of painting energy on them. Brush wise, I actually like using this one because it's got this nice thin razor sharp, well not razor sharp, <laughs> but it's nice thin edge here. It works really good for drawing the trunks. And then I utilize the corner of the brush to do like little the little top of the trees and then I start turning it horizontally and just work my way down. If you're more comfortable using a smaller brush, just pick one of your little ones, whether it's your medium brush or whatever small brush you're working with. This one that I just pulled in today, I feel like is, uh, it might work, we'll see. But I, I think it's probably too small for these trees. So I would say either of these brushes. Let's mix up a similar color to this. These are, these are pretty blue. I want to uh, maybe add a little more black to that color. So I'll just see it work in my same little pile 
I see a little mixing spot. Black and blue first. Gradually add a little white to that. If it's looking too blue, which this probably is, add just a tiny bit of black. I have a tendency to not mix enough paint, so I'm gonna be different. Mix more than I feel I will need. This could be a tiny bit lighter. So these background trees, they're not super dark. Let me show you again. They're pretty light. They're kind of more of a faded out color in the background. I'm gonna test this and see. That's maybe a little darker than I want. So let me add a little more white to this. I don't know that that did much of anything. Definitely looks gray with just a slight bluish tone to it. Okay, I'm gonna add a drop of water to this. Just dip the very tip of the bristles in the water and put a little water in here. So it makes it somewhat fluid, but not as thin as like water. Although we are working on a flat surface. So it's if this was on an easel up like that, then I would worry about stuff rolling and dripping down, but we are not gonna worry about that because we're working on a flat surface. I'm just gonna go with this original mark I made and I'll go from the ground up and make a tree trunk. And you know, I'm gonna show you on paper first, the way I paint fir trees. I make, let's just go right through this grassy stuff. So I make the tree trunk first. You can see it's not straight, it's leaning a little. That's very natural, they do that in nature. And then I use the corner of my brush and I do a little row of dots at the top of this. And this is representing that one tree bough covered with fir needles that points straight up. And if you put up a Christmas tree, this is what you put your Christmas star on. And they're almost never straight. We usually have to be uh, cut down or something. And I, I know that at Christmas tree farms, they train the trees to have these and they're even still not perfectly straight. Still using the corner of my brush, I'm gonna go straight across and make the very top tree, uh, tree branches at the very top. Very narrow, because we wanna keep these, these trees are kinda of tall and narrow. If you commit to being wide too soon, you're gonna end up with a tree that's like this. <laughs> we don't want that. We want something that's more like a tall, narrow triangle. So then under that, I'll do another one, not much wider, and then another, and then I actually turn my brush, so I'm using it horizontally, and literally zigzag back and forth. Super simple tree, and we'll put the snow on later on, which takes it from a simple tree to looking like something that's a little more involved. So don't be too stressed out about this. So little dots at the top in those first little branches. You can see already it's starting to form into a weird looking tree. <laughs> now I'm going to turn my brush and I'm just using the razor thin edge and working my way down here. So right here it is disappearing a bit over the those background grassy trees they put on there. Not a big deal when we add snow to this. As long as you can see it just enough to add snow later on, you'll be fine. Because on this, you can see they're very close in color. Tree number one is just about done. At the bottom, I kind of just give it a little bit of a skirt sort of thing. So we've got these like mustachey shapes and then I just brush across the bottom. We can also bank a little snow across the bottom of the tree if it doesn't look super great. Okay, more and more, we're gonna do these. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have like close to 10 of these, so probably, I probably did overkill, which is probably why it took so long in the studio. You don't have to do as many. What I do first is uh, I'll draw the tree trunks at varying heights. And I, I made a mistake that I hate, and I evenly spaced them, so, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one right next to it. Do one up here, here. This one can go a little taller. And that's probably all the trees I'm going to do. So we don't want to kill ourselves <laughs> with this project dress wise. Just don't get too wide with these and you'll be just fine. Very simple. I would call these like impressionist trees. We're giving the impression of fir trees without going crazy painting individual little tree boughs and branches and needles. I'll show you when, how it works out if I use a little bit bigger brush. I mean, sorry, a little bit smaller brush. I'll do one of those that way. Let me just finish these up on this side. Some people are maybe a little intimidated using such a big brush here. But it does, it does work out pretty good and get them done pretty fast. So if I were to use this brush, my medium brush, I need to mix up a little more paint. Let's try and get that same color. Add a little water. That's pretty close. You can hardly see it on my brush. So little dots at the top. The first little tree boughs look like a little mustache. So it looks like an arrow pointing up or across. And then I just draw a bunch of little mustaches. I tend to go quicker with these. Um, just, I don't like to overthink them. And I feel like if I go a little bit quicker, I'm less likely <laughs> to overthink it. So this one's okay. Um, it definitely looks different than these. It's just a little more detailed maybe. I like the look of these and we're gonna use this brush to put the snow on those. So we're gonna get this sort of look anyways. So I'm gonna go back to my big brush and finish these off. Always just utilize the corner of the brush at the top and then as you get down a bit, you can start zigzagging these tree boughs in. One last one here. Working my way down, let's see here. Some of these you could bring down a little further onto the horizon. This one, I don't know what happened here. Don't know if I dragged my hand through it or if I just didn't quite get the bottom done up nicely. All right, it looks like over the river and through the woods. <laughs> That's what we want. We want it to look like this is a either someone who just got their Christmas tree or maybe it's a, um, a truck that delivers from a tree farm. I was, uh, had we had more time in the studio, I was gonna show people how they could do a, a name or a logo there. So keep that in mind. That's something you can do. I'm gonna wash my brush. If you're still working on those trees, I'm going to have you pause the video and just catch up. So remember, I'm going to say it again, we want to expend most of our painting energy on the truck. Keep the rest of this stuff really simple. So don't, don't uh, overdo it in your brain. <laughs> I could add more trees. Like if, it, if you don't like this area here, 
You could add more trees in there. I'm going to leave it this time and see how it looks. I think it's okay. Um, I could use a smaller brush and kind of refine the tops of these. Like maybe I could do like a suggestion of a fir tree way back there that's just popping out of the top. I see a lot of painters do that in the studio. They'll do this tree line. Oops, I think I just dragged my hair in yellow. I totally did. Natural highlights. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I see a lot of students do this in the studio with the little brush. They'll take this rugged tree line that we painted in that looked like the sound wave. And just paint a few more detailed trees that just sort of pop up in there like they're coming out of the middle of the woods here. Why not? We can do it. It's our painting. You get to create it how you like it. Gonna let that sort of disappear down here. Yeah, that was nice actually. I had a little bit too large of a gap here. So that broke it up pretty good. And now I'm going to put snow on these trees. It's okay if they're still a little bit wet. What happens when you when it's still wet is you get more of the, the blue tone of the snow, which we like because we don't it's getting to be dark. And we don't in, in that scene and we don't want uh, pure white snow. This brush, medium sized brush, or you can use one of your small brushes, like whatever smallest brush you have. And I'm gonna take a little white on the brush, not a whole lot, start at the top, and literally just flock these trees with a little white. So where my tree boughs kind of disappeared through here and became one big blob, I'll just recreate them with white just dusting the tops of these so here see how I'm leaving uh, dark showing through I'm not cramming white completely all over the tree I like to make it look like it's just been dusted with snow so we see some of the dark in there too it makes it a little more three-dimensional again this is the same as what I said before keep it very simple don't overthink it don't use a lot of paint because then you have to figure out what to do with it all. I like a, see how I have very little paint on my brush. Look at my brush, hardly any on there, but it's there, trust me, you can see it coming through. So even when I redip my paintbrush in the paint, I don't pick up a big blob like this. I'll pick up a little bit and then I'll even brush it out on my palette somewhere. Oh, I can see the top of my head in here. You can see all my gray hair caused by the pandemic. <laughs> Shutting down my business too many times. <laughs> Paul's shaking his head at me. <laughs> it's true. So this should just look like someone came through and sprinkled powdered sugar all over these trees. Little dusting with very little paint. And they're looking way better. Compare them to these. So much better. At least in my opinion. Maybe you like the others better. You can even work pretty fast. Uh, I might use a small brush for these. I'm a little scared of using this one. So I'll just continue on and finish these up. So here's what you don't have to like focus on each individual tree bow and make sure that you coat each individual tree bow like that. That's what's going to take you a long time. It's like you're creating new tree bows. As long as you're in the same general area of the tree, just literally dab it on. There. Oh, that looks a little weird down there. I'll just kind of brush it out. It's a snowbank. Unintentional little snowbank here. There. I like that. That worked out good. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish these last two up. 
Again, I'm going to say it again. Don't spend too much time on these because it's not necessary. They're such a background object. And these just sort of bleed together, but you see the tops of them. You can tell there's three different trees there. Just if you cover up the top, it just looks like a big hedge. And I could do a, a snowbank anywhere. If you don't like the bottom of any of your trees, just take a little more white on your brush and create a little banked up bit of snow. Just let your brush run out of paint as you brush down. All right, so I said I want to use a small brush to do these. I think that will be best. Again, don't pick up a glob of paint. Pick up a little paint, brush it off on your palette somewhere or your paper towel so it looks like you have hardly any. It's there. And we'll give these little small trees, if you did those, a nice little dusting of white too. Same technique, you're just using this littler brush. So here, what I'm doing, look, I'm letting my brush run out of paint and that just makes that tree just sort of fade away into the forest, which I like. Okay, definitely looks like a cute little snowy forest in Finland or somewhere. <laughs> and now I'm going to paint this darker tree, this one darker tree that's a little more in the foreground, it's done the same way as these. We'll probably use a little bit smaller brush to give it more of a furry look just because it's closer. But it's darker. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to mix blue and black. Let's use our medium sized brush. I've got a little white on mine, so I'm going to wash it off, dry it off. Medium sized brush, I'll just pull about equal parts black and blue together. So it's pretty dark when you brush it out, it's like deep indigo. And then I add a little bit of white. Maybe a drop of water, not too much water because your wood board will kind of absorb it and it, it uh, can kind of um, bleed out a little bit. So here's my color. And I will put this one probably right in between these two. It really doesn't matter. Like it could even be here, but since I did it on the original, I did it right just off the back of the truck and higher up, that works good. So some people like to go from the sky down. Some people like to go from the ground up. I'll compromise and I'll do both. So what I do is I'll put a dot where I want the base of the tree to go, a little bit lower down than those others. And then in the sky, I'm going to put a dot where I want it to come up to, just sort of eyeball it so it's in line, right about there. And then connect the dots and create a tree trunk that gets totally covered up. So don't stress about this at all. Need a little more water mixed in my paint, I think. And then at the top, the little row of dots to create the top tree branch that sticks straight up little mustache here at the bottom of that and then another mustache and I'm literally just dabbing my brush up and down the more you dab your brush up and down the furrier and more natural your tree is going to look
This one turned out maybe a little narrower than this one. So you can widen it up if you want, or you can leave it on the narrow side. Just as long as you have a tree there, that's all that matters. And the, the little skirt thing I was talking about at the bottom of the tree is easier with this brush. So I'm literally like one side I brush outward and the other side I brush outward and then they meet in the middle. If it doesn't turn out good, you can paint a little bank of snow later, not now or else it will turn a little gray. This needs to dry just a bit before we put snow on it because the snow will definitely turn pretty gray with this wet paint. But see how I'm dabbing over the tree trunk? I don't want any of that tree trunk to show really. It's pretty dense. All right, let's let that dry. And finally, we're gonna get down to our truck. What I wanna have us do first is paint the shadow under the truck and the two tire tracks that come out. And it's gonna that's gonna stay for a while until we come through and we finish the tires and we add the little banked up snow there. So let's take our medium brush and we want to use, let's use the same color we were just using. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white to it, just to lighten it a bit. So it's more in line with the color of these trees back here. So just a little bit of white added to the color you just did here, which was black and blue mixed together with a tiny bit of white. Let's go right under the truck first. Go right up to the bottom. At a bottom a little uh, step rail. And I'm going to come under the tires. So let's talk about why this shadow is here. So our moon is on the other side of the truck. So it's going to make the truck cast a shadow out on this side. And I want to come down. I might add a little water to my paint because it's running out. Just scribble back and forth. I want to come down a bit under, a bit further than under the truck. And on the front here, you're going to go right up to the bumper and back here. Shading under here, it would also be casting a shadow. That's good enough. If you want to get super technical, you can cast an, an exact opposite uh, reflection of this down on the snow, but that's not necessary unless you really want to do it. So now I'm just going to take, I'm going to line this up with the tire and I need more paint. I never mix enough. I'm going to go and make a tire track. It's about a quarter inch wide-ish, kind of, sort of. Straight off the board. That's maybe a little darker than my original color. I hate it when I run out of paint and have to mix a whole new color. This is going to look weird at first because we still have to bank the snow up around the edges. So it looks really strange. Then just above this one, right at maybe the bumper level, I'll do the second one from the other tire or tires. I'm going to match this color up just a bit by shading some of this new color I mixed right on here. And that's good for now. Don't let it bother you too much. It doesn't look real pretty. Sip your beverage. That will help. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to work on the truck itself. And what I do first is I actually trace all those outlines we put on with a darker burgundy shade. And then we color the truck pure red 
And then we brush some of that darker burgundy on here and there to sort of age the truck a little bit. So let's use our small brush, whichever one you have, and you might buy, you might have bought your own set, or you might have one of ours that we sent you that you ordered. Whatever small brush you have, let's take the brush and we're gonna mix black and red to get a burgundy. That looks about right. You can add a drop of water to it, not too much, because again, it tends to uh, tends to sort of blow out a little bit in the wood, or bleed out. And I'm going to start up here, and I'll just trace across the top. And go down here. Start with whatever area feels more comfortable to you, just as long as you get everything outlined. Occasionally refresh your paint with just a little bit of water. I tend to like to pull towards me, so a lot of times I'll turn my board and do it that way. I also have a tendency to rest my hand on the board a lot when I'm tracing like this. And sometimes you'll get wet paint on your hand. <laughs> so just keep in mind, like this is nice and dry now, so that's okay for me. But like if I were to work down here, I'd smear my red. Which wouldn't be a tragedy if that happened because it's pretty easy to paint over. Don't need to trace your bumpers. Those will get painted in with gray. And you don't need to trace the little tail light either. If your lines are a little wobbly here and there, it's kind of a whimsical painting, so I don't I don't worry about that too much. My lines are almost always wobbly with this sort of thing. And the, if I wanted perfectly razor razor straight lines, I would use a ruler, but I actually don't really love that look for this painting. I like the kind of whimsical quality it has. And if you're a car person, I apologize if this truck isn't 100% accurate with the way the sizing of things. <laughs> but I wanted to keep it pretty simple so the average person could paint it pretty easily. Getting there. This little brush works great for this. If you're running out of paint too fast, maybe mix a little more paint so you have a, a bigger pool of paint to dip into. But the other thing is every once in a while, just mix in like one drop of water just to thin it out. It tends to evaporate as it sits here. Okay, I got just about everything. I need to get this across here. I'm gonna do a little bit thicker outline here. Just double check. 
I think I got everything outside of the bumpers and all that. I do see a little spot here. I need to paint some blue up to there, but I'm going to do that later because if I do it now, it's going to mix with the red and I'll have weird pink snow. <laughs> so I'm going to actually let the truck outline dry, which will only take a few minutes. This is nice and dry. It's ready to have some snow put on it. Here it is on the original. It's done the same way as those background trees. I'm going to use my middle size brush again. Make sure it's clean. If you're still working on the outline, just pause it up. Middle size brush, white paint. And I have a little too much on the brush, I can tell. So I just wipe some of it off. Dab a bit on the, the top little spike there. And then go ahead and dust the tree with white. Now this could have more of a pure white. Like here, back here we used a thin amount of paint, a small amount, so that uh, it was kind of, it turned kind of pale blue. For this tree, you can use brighter white if you want. It will help it stand out even more than the, even more against those background trees than it, than it does with just a darker color. This is another tree that when I designed the painting, I briefly thought about adding some decorations or lights to this tree. It could totally be done. Since we're not in the studio and I'm not having to uh, have 30 people finish at the same time, it's something you can do later. You can play around with this painting as much as you want. Mostly, I want you to have fun with it, so pour yourself something fun and put on some holiday music and enjoy yourself. It should be an enjoyable experience. In theory. I hope it is. There, I like that one. That turned out pretty decent. So I do have some of the dark showing through. Gonna wash my brush now and set it. No, I'm not gonna set it aside. Not yet. I want to paint the window in. It is a dark gray. It's the same color as the bumpers. Just, yeah, just about the same color. So let's go ahead and mix up black and white. If you feel like you need to use a smaller brush, like if this one feels too big for the bumpers, I would switch down. I'm going to use this one to paint the window in, but I'm, I probably will switch down to a smaller size brush for the bumpers. We'll see. So let's do equal parts white. There's a little glob of white to the same amount of black and stir that together. Let's see what we get. Kind of a medium slash dark. It's medium getting on the darker side of gray. That's what I want. And I'm going to paint the window in carefully. Maybe I will use this larger brush to get up close to the edges, not all the way to the edges, and I'll set it in the water and I'll switch to my little guy and use this one to get close to those outlines or right up next to them. One thing that can be done here, which I kind of did on this one, I streaked a little bit of black in there while this was still wet, just to make it look like it's not just one solid color. Like what else is in here? We can't see. There's someone in there, obviously, with tinted windows. I kept this these windows really dark just because I didn't want to have to have you guys paint a person. <laughs> so windows up with we'll put these uh, these little slanted lines in there to represent glass, and then we get the snow piled up on here. We don't need to paint a person. All right, so I did smudge a little black in there just uh, imperfectly. And now I will take my little brush while well, I've got it in hand and I'm going to outline the bumpers and paint those in.
pretty simple. They're just kind of a rounded rectangular shape. This is one of those old trucks that if, if you rear end it, there'll be no damage to this truck. These big bumpers. But your car might be in worse shape. All right, it's coming around here, outlining and filling in. I just realized as I'm working on this um, that I didn't trace the headlight. It's super easy to draw, so we're fine. Um, it's just literally a half circle. That's in fact in the in the studio when we did this one, we just painted it on. We didn't trace it. We just had a we had a cardboard template to trace, so everybody had to draw all this stuff on their own. We didn't have the graphite paper then. So what I'm talking about is this little part here. It's funny to realize it later. Oopsie, forgot to trace that. It's so easy to draw on, so don't worry about it. I'm going to now take my gray that I made, and I'm going to mix a little bit of white into it to make more of a silvery color, and that will be the color of the little wheel hubcap thingies. So nice lighter gray, think silvery. Add a drop of water to that. And I'll trace this and fill it in. Looks like the same color as the background right now just because of the tone of it. But when we paint these tires black, it will look different. It'll, look, it'll stand out more. And then we also end up outlining this silvery hubcap in red. So it matches the truck. It looks really cute. You know, let's take this silvery color and paint the door handle in with that. The door handle is another thing that I added later when I taught the class. So if you end up painting over it with red, and lose it completely. It's so easy to put back on. Okay, so we have silver hubcap, silver handle, gray bumpers, gray with smudged in a little black in the window. And now I'm going to, I'll paint this little tail light in with orange. That's just red and yellow mixed together. I wasn't sure what color to make it because I know tail lights are like blinkers are orange, orangish. So I just decided, you know, it's, it can be orange. It might get lost in, in the truck if we painted it a different color. Now it stands out. <laughs> there we go. Little rectangular sheep. Again, this is something that can be painted on top of the red if you lose it by painting over it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to metal brush and pure red paint. And I'm going to go and fill in all of the rest of the truck. You can turn your board around different directions to get in easier access to different areas as you fill in. If you overlap your outlines a bit, that's fine. They will show through in most cases because this red alone tends to be a little transparent. It's one of those darker colors that can be a little transparent. I'll use my little brush to get around the door handle and the tail light. Now, what you can do while you've got this little brush in hand and it has a red on it, just go ahead and outline this tail light area so that you don't have to switch brushes when you get to here.
And it looks like I'll probably have to paint that a little bigger. The tail light goes that way. As I went around it, I ended up reducing the size of it a bit. Doesn't matter what uh, order you go in. But here, look, when I paint over this wheel well, it still shows through because of the transparency of the red against the dark outline. So don't stress too much about uh, trying to not go over your outlines. They can always be painted back on later too, if they end up a little too subtle. So yeah, throughout this process, I will switch back and forth occasionally between the medium brush and the small brush, depending on what the area looks like that you're filling in, the size of the area. Sometimes I might turn my canvas or cord. That bright red against all that bluish gray and white looks so good. Oops. Overlapped above the the hood of the truck a little, that's all right. I'll make do. It wasn't too bad. Back on the camera, it looks like you can't even see it. Now, keep in mind as we're working and I'm covering my outlines with a coating of paint and you can still see the outlines through, we put snow along the top of a lot of this. And so it's okay to have really subtle outlines because the snow is what's going to outline it. area left over here that I'll use my little brush for. And I've got a nice little coat of red on here. I do just the one coat because uh, we paint some of the burgundy on here that we use to outline with just to sort of age some areas of the truck a bit. And one thing I want to re-outline is the window because it did kind of get a little bit lost. So that was just black and red mixed together to make a deep burgundy. Any spot that you feel like maybe, like the door, if it disappeared too much, a little outline there would be good because it doesn't get snow to define it since it's a vertical shape. And let's see here, this outline got lost. But again, it gets snow there. So now if you're still outlining, and you're not quite ready to move on, 
or I'm sorry, you're still filling in the track or outlining and not ready to move on. Pause the video. I'm going to move on now to get the track a little more vintage. I'm going to use the same brush that I um, filled the truck in with. So my medium brush. Dry it off. Clean it off. Dry it off really good. And I have this burgundy color. I want to mix a tiny bit more red with it so it's not such a huge difference between the pure red and the outline color. Like there's a big difference between that and that. So I want something kind of in the middle. And I'll use this. Okay, maybe I need a little more dark. I'll use this and brush it on in certain parts of the track. It's more of a, you're just kind of scraping it on. So you want it to look like uh, there's, you know, it's an old paint job. Unless you want it to look brand sparkly new. I'm just showing how it looks on here. So you can see that where I've got bits of that dark brushed in there. Just scribbled in really, streaked in. Like along the bottom edge of this track bed here, this line under here, that's a good spot to put some. Even a little on here. Long little step bar there. Maybe along here. And definitely some on the hood. I don't have a ton of paint on the brush. And one thing you can do here, I'll put a little on the top. If it looks too harsh and you don't want it, if it looks like, like it's way too dark, what you can do is you can glaze over some of that with the red. You'll want to wash your brush, dry it off real good, and just glaze over some of those parts with pure red and it will soften them up. They'll still be there but they're not going to be as intense if you feel like it's too intense. It always just depends on how deep of a burgundy color you ended up with. So just glaze over some of those if needed. You might not need to. I don't really need to. I feel like I my, my darker colors didn't end up too dark, but I some kind of satisfying about this. <laughs> There we go. So while the truck is drying, I'm going to paint the tires in. And our most, our, our brush would probably be the best one to use would be, this one's maybe a little too big. So probably the small brush, whichever small brush you have. And I'll go ahead and trace the tire first. Remember the bottom edge gets snow banked up right against it. Here, I'll show you again, right there. So don't worry about a perfect circle down there. It can be a little smashed. <laughs> and I'll outline the back one too. Obviously not super great outline job by me here. You can trim these little brushes too. Uh, like every once in a while, I'll have like a robe, long hair poking out and I'll just use scissors and trim it. You don't want to make the tip of it blunt, so, but you can trim any weird brush fibers off. <laughs> you know, so, uh, when you're filling this in, sometimes it's easier to outline the spots that you don't want filled in. So like this wheel hubcap. I'll outline that on both of these. Then I just have the black donut to fill in. I 
There we go. There's one. One down. One to go. Okay. I noticed an area I need, need to fill in a little either gray or red. I think I'll use a little red. It was right here where the bumper meets the wheel well. I ended up with some of the wood color showing through. And then down here, I see a bit of wood color there, so I'm going to mix up my shading color that I put under the truck. Unfortunately, mine dried up, so I need to start fresh. There, so much better. Awesome. Definitely, the truck definitely sort of, uh, all the definition kind of disappears a bit until we have the chance to add these bits of snow in which completely change it and make it look so much better. Right now, what I want to have us do while the red dries and while the tires dry and all of that I want to put some of the lighter shines in the window and on the bumpers and on the, the silvery wheels there. So I want to use my smallest brush in white. But I dip my brush in white and I'm going to brush it off on my palette or paper towel. So I have just a little on here. And I'll start with the bumper. I just do a, a line across the front and then it's like a backwards L shape. And then this one would be reverse. Line on the back. Did I say backwards? This one's backwards. This one's backwards. This one's correct. L. <laughs> and now a little white in the wheels. Just a little curved white on either side here. The other part you can put a little shine is on the door handle, like it's chrome or something. And finally, the window gets, first I'll go along the front and do the L shape. Not the backwards L. <laughs> you can do a line back here too. But to make it look like glass, this is something I learned when I started drawing cartoons and stuff. I would do these real thin angled white lines. It's the cartoon representation of glass. And if you end up with too much, you can always go back to your gray and touch anything up. Like right here where these connect, I don't like that. I could thin out any of these if they were too thick. But that is going to do, do it for now. And hopefully your truck is drying nicely. That's what we want because if I started painting white snow on here right now, some of it would turn pink, although mine's pretty dry. That is the nice thing about painting on wood. It does dry really fast. So if you're buying drying time, one of the things that you can do is you can hair dry your board and it will dry it super fast, like within 30 seconds. Or you can work on some other part of the painting, like maybe go back to one of these trees that you were working on or uh, some other part of the painting. You could do snowflakes, like these little snowflakes. I usually do them last. They're done with the handle of the little brush and you literally just stamp them all over. 
Or you can use the brush end, but the handle does make nice circular dots. And then um, later on, you can put them in the sky and on the ground, but later on we, we do put them over the truck too. So that would be something you'd go back to if you start those now. Um, there was something I wanted to do here. Oh, I know. I am going to outline the silvery hubcaps with red, with my little brush. And I just go over the silver part because then it will show up better than if you go over the black part. Plus some of my black tire is still a tiny bit wet. That defines them a little bit. It makes them match up with the truck. Super cute. I can right now, while I'm still buying drying time, fix up my little tail light here. It sort of got lost when I painted red around it. So I'm making up some orange again. And I'll just repaint that. For the headlight, this part of my track is nice and dry, so I can paint the headlight on there. If you're really scared to draw it on, you can go back to this and tape it on again and put your graphite paper under there, but I know most of you guys will be just fine drawing it on. Because it's literally just a curved shape, like a C shape that has this straight line on it. So it's like a half circle. I'm gonna paint it on with white first, and then we put yellow on it later. And we get to do this uh, this cool little ray of headlight that goes through there. So it's right towards the front, and I'm gonna do with white just a little long C shape. So it's not like a perfectly arced tight C, it's kind of more of an open long shape. And then this is gonna go straight down. So that's what it should look like, and I'll fill it in with white. All right, now we're gonna put some fun snow on the truck itself. We're gonna start with up here, and then the hood, and the tailgate. And then we'll start working on some of these other parts with the little brush. But for first starting out, for the larger areas of snow, like here and here and here, let's use this medium-sized brush. And just a little white on the tip of it. So see, I just poked the very tip of the brush in the white. And let's start at the top. I literally just dab it on. It can overlap the very top of the truck that you painted with red. And it can go as thick as you want, depending on how much snowfall you want to have happened here. And then I'll put a little on the hood. Go right on up to where it starts going upward for the window. And then another layer across the tailgate. And now I'm going to switch to my smallest brush in order to do all the little smaller bits of snow that go over the wheel wells and window and all that. So little brush here, white paint, of course. And how about, I'm going to start with the window. So I do this curve along here and here, and then it just goes straight across. It doesn't have to be as thick of a layer as, as what was on top. Because maybe when they slam the door closed, some of it knocked off. Cool. 
And you can use this little brush to touch up anything up here or on the other parts of the truck that you need to fix up at all. And other parts uh, down here, right where the door meets these little step bar areas. There would be some snow here. Just using a really light touch with my brush. You don't need to really jab it down, just tiny little dots here. And then how about some here? I could even put it here too. See how I kind of broke these up? I tend to like to do it that way. Just sort of defines the door and everything a little more, at least in my opinion. And then I'm gonna go across the wheel well here. We can still see the outline, hopefully. <laughs> If not, you're going to fake it. <laughs> fake it with the snow. And it's just going to be this top part of the arch here. Because down here it would have fallen off. And of course there's going to be some on this horizontal edge here for the bumper area. Now the front wheel well and front bumper, and that should do it for the snow on the truck. So I'll do some on the front bumper here, go right up to the wheel well, and it's going to go across here. I hope we get a little snowfall this year. I always love it when it snows. It's just so, makes everything look so clean and beautiful. And I am in Oregon. I know a lot of you guys are as well because you follow us on at Vango. So we, you know, we occasionally get a record snowfall, but not as often as some of you Midwest people and East Coast. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> My mom grew up in Michigan and she said that uh, she would have snow from like October to March and they actually got sick of it. So some of you guys probably do get a little tired of it. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to see if I need to close the curtains. That didn't really do anything. We've got afternoon sun coming in here. It is about 2.10. We don't have a whole lot left to do with this painting, but enough to keep us busy for a bit longer. Um, I wanna take some light gray and paint it on the tires. I'll show you what I do. So the gray that we made for the bumper is just fine, or even a tiny bit lighter, and you don't need much paint at all. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating like uh, little ridges in the rubber tires, but not all the way around. I'll just do like three, four lines here, three, four lines here. So like that. Simple and quick. You don't need to spend a huge amount of time doing that. Washing the brush. While this snow dries, which won't take too too long, as you know now, we're painting on the, the wood, um, I am going to build the snow up along these tire tracks and the bottom of the tires. So here's our original. You can see I just used pure white, came along here, came along here, and then I painted a little on either side of this tire track. And yeah, built it up at the bottom edge of the tires too. So this truck is sort of just plowing through the snow. I'm going to move this up so it's out of that sunlight just a bit. Let's take our middle size brush and dip it in white. Maybe I'll brush off a little extra paint. You can use more paint than we use like on these trees. But uh, I do want to have a decent amount. I'm going to go along here and just sort of brush down, let it brush out here. Run your brush out of paint. And see how I'm, I'm not keeping it flat, I'm doing little, like there's little bumps and ridges. This is where you fix, out, fix up those flat tires.
So then I'm going to take that wet paint and brush it down like it did here. And just let the brush run out of paint. Look at that, plowing its way through. You can always go back and add some more white here and there if it looks like it's, if it just looks like it needs it. But just always remember you want to brush, brush it out and down. I could add some snow banking in here just to make the bottom area a little more interesting. And you can also add, like, if you needed to fix up the bottom of this, let's say I wanted to fix it up. I could just add a little tiny bit, not a lot of paint on the brush, a little snow back here. And again, brush down like we've been doing with the brush run out of paint. But this other tire track, I put a little, little white in the center and build it up just over the bottom edge of this second tire track here. And on the top edge too, it's just gives it the look of that that blue tire track being carved in, which is causing the snow around it to sort of build up. I could put a little on the other side of this one too, the top edge. There, yeah, I like that. It looks pretty good. And it, you know, you can add more snow banks anywhere. Give this landscape a little more interest. As I'm doing this, one thing you can see is that I'm leaving some of the dark areas through here. What I'm doing here, you can also do some back in the back if it feels too flat, but make sure you use very little paint. Like I just put too much on here. So what I'll do with that is just brush my brush across it to pick up paint and then wipe it on the towel and then just sort of brush this out here and there. And we're just about ready to paint the Christmas tree in the back of the truck. I feel like looking at my original, I brought the snow down a little further, real close to this step bar here. So I'm going to do that. I kind of like it. I feel like it defined this area a little better. There. Okay. Anything on this track that you feel like you need to re outline to make stand out more, like the door? or anything on here, you can do that at the end. On the video, mine really looks like it's faded out and you can't see it, but in person I see it completely. So just to make it show up a little more on the video, I'll outline it a little darker. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's really dark in person here. I think I'm struggling a little bit with the sunlight coming through. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Okay, so we are going to paint the Christmas tree on, and then we'll decorate it and paint the snowfall. And we'll skip around a bit here and there because I want to do the, the headlight. Maybe we'll do that while the tree is drying and paint that the yellow and with the yellow light bar coming out. But let's mix a color for the tree. I'm going to use my middle size brush to mix the color and maybe even start the tree. We'll see. But for mixing color, these little brushes, they can get damaged really easy by stirring paint around and smashing it around on your palette. So I tend to not use them too much for mixing and you guys saw me do it a few times. So blue and yellow, that's gonna get our green. Now you can adjust this green however you like. The one on the original, let's show the tree color. So you can see this is more of a yellow green. This is more of a, a teal. So I'm gonna add more yellow to it.
but it's up to you. You can have more of an evergreen color that's a little darker and bluer. You could even touch in a little bit of black and that will turn it a little more toned down, but not too much black because you don't want it to overpower it. We've got people laughing outside. I don't know what they're doing. The bar is closed, people. It's closed. <laughs> There's a bar kind of is below us and over to the side. And we hear people there pretty often at night mainly. So this made kind of a, an army green. I know it's a little hard to see in the video. At least on this monitor. Maybe on your monitor it appears better. I get kind of obsessive about how it appears on camera. So I actually am going to draw it with my little brush. I want to add a little bit of water here. Now this tree is leaning. It is in the truck bed and it's leaning across the top and it's probably completely unnatural. Obviously you don't drive around with decorated tree in the back of your truck. But, you know, maybe in a parade or something you would do that. So let's show it again. I draw the tree trunk first. It just kind of comes across and, and leans against this back of the cab here. And it, you can see it goes up goes up above the, the truck. Like if I were to measure this, it's about a little over an inch. Maybe even getting close to an inch and a half. But you could also make your tree stand upright. I've seen a lot of paintings of the red truck with the tree in the back where the tree is standing straight up and down. So it's up to you. I'll teach it the way it looks on here though. Let me just scoot this over so you can see both at the same time. So what I'm going to do first is I'll, I'll draw right here. I just want to draw a diagonal line in the green. So then I know where this tree is going to lean. And then I'm just going to continue this line down until I hit the bed of the truck here. If you accidentally paint over the snow that's on your truck, it's easy to fix. Some of the tree boughs are going to actually go over the truck. Then this is going to go up a little higher so that if I were to measure the distance between here and here, it ends up about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in between those two. And don't let this weird you out too much. We are painting a tree at an angle, so that's always a little awkward. Sometimes if you turn your your uh, board so that it feels more like you're painting a tree straight up and down that might be easier but let's talk about trees just like before we've got that one tree bow that sticks straight up so I, I literally will just paint here I'll do a blown up version of what I'm doing here you can see it on this tree this tree is the exact same tree so I've got at the top of the tree this is a blown up version you have these pine needles and one that stands straight up. This is what I'm having us paint at the top of our truck tree. Right here. That is what I'm painting right now. Just looks like a feather. It's just a smaller version on here. And then on either side of that, I'm going to go up at kind of a kind of like a wide V shape. And those also get the same pine needle treatment or feather, whatever helps you think of it better. <laughs> Little short lines. So there we go. That's the start. And then I'm going to do another. These ones are starting to go downward more because the first ones go up just like this one. First ones go up and then they start going more out and down. What I like to do before I start doing all the pine needles on every single branch that I draw, I like to shape this tree out first. So that's what I'm doing, going down the tree, shaping it out. Now on this side that's next to the truck, make those tree bows come over the cab. Because they would kind of hang down, but back here in the bed, we want it to stay in the bed for the most part. Otherwise it wouldn't quite make sense. So I'm even gonna color this solid in here. But just have a few of these go over the truck cab itself.
Let me show you this one again. I'll scoot it over. Same thing. You can see a few of these go over the cab. And then this side is all tucked into the, the bed of the truck. But this side, we want to show the tree boughs like, like we do here. The tone of this color, it might get a little bit lost in some of the background, especially close to the truck. But when we add these yellow lights all over, it will stand out. So I'm just doing little feathery swoops right now, just to shape the tree out till I get down to the bottom. And then you can go through and any of the ends of these branches that stick out, especially up in here, you can do that, give it the pine needle treatment that I was talking about just to make it a little more natural looking. But don't do it on every single branch because that will take you forever. Just any that really stand out Your tree lights, those little yellow lights, are going to cover up a lot of this detail work you do, so don't spend a lot of extra time. I keep the middle pretty full. I don't want to see the tree trunk through, and I don't really want to see a whole lot of air space in the background coming through the tree on, in the middle part. So there we go. Let's get it in the sunlight there. And that is our tree shaped out. It needs to dry before we do anything else to it. So let's wash our brush. Pause the video if you're still catching up. Let's see if I can get this in the... The sunlight I'm not sure of. It's either good or it's not <laughs> for this painting. But I think for what we're working on now, having a bit of sunlight coming through is not a bad thing. Let's work on our headlight now. So you can see on this one, it's a pale yellow and then it's casting this arc of light out. So if I were to draw that on the paper, this is what your headlight looks like. So we're seeing it from the side. And then literally it's just gonna brush out at a, the, the light that comes out from the headlight is gonna brush out like that. So we've got an angle down here and an angle up here. Let's mix up our color. So since we need just a small amount of paint, you can mix it with this little brush, just don't mash it down on the palette. Let's scrape off, <laughs> I don't have a lot of yellow that's not polluted. Let's scrape off a bit of yellow, and I want to mix about equal amounts of white to that, so you get a nice pale yellowy color. I think I got a little blue mixed in there. Yep, I did. It's okay. The yellow is kind of overpowering any residue. You know, I think it's coming out of my brush, actually. So there, nice pale yellow. If you want to warm it up a little, just add more yellow back to it. There we go. I'm going to paint the headlight now. Just paint it solid. And then I want to brush off excess paint out of my brush onto the palette. I'm going to start this with a small amount. So you can see on here, it's see-through. We'll put some snowflakes over it, so that looks really cool. And now I'm just going to draw these two lines that come out. And you might use your middle brush, this one here, with a little bit of paint on it. Just a little. Look at my brush. Very small amount. And I'm just going to smear out. Use the wet paint that's on the headlight. I don't want to paint on this. <laughs> And just smear it outward, like so. And if you end up needing to repaint the headlight in, because when you smeared it out, it sort of disappeared, feel free to do that anytime. I'll just take, you know, I'll take just some plain yellow, so it's a little slightly different color than the ray. And there. Not bad. It works. Get a little bit bigger ray, it looks like, on this one. Sometimes I use my fingertips to sort of smear the wet paint around. Oops, I keep getting it on this. Duh. 
Oh, I've got a little blob of water. That happened because I put my brushes over here and my water over here. Okay, we are getting really close to being done here. Um, if you want to decorate the door in any way, you can absolutely do that. In fact, I'm going to do that because I'm buying a little drying time for the tree. Let's see, what color do I want to use? I'll just use white. And I am going to paint a word here. I like to use really whimsical font. This is 100,000% optional. You could paint your family's name on here. <laughs> well, that's kind of cute. The other thing, you could do a logo. You could do a, a little Christmas tree here. But it's, like I said, 100% optional. You don't have to do it. I'm kind of locked in now because painting over that, I'd probably have to do a whole bunch of different coats of red. So I'm just going to leave it. We know what it looks like without, we know what it looks like with. All right, so what I wanna do with the green tree now, it's dried enough that I can put some of these red ornaments on it and they are literally just pure red little circles. You can do them different sizes too. Like you could have some small ones mixed in with larger. That's gonna need to dry. And as you know, things dry really fast. What I'll do while that's drying, I'm gonna do all these snowflakes in the background. And those work really good with the handle of the little brush literally just stamping it in. As your handle, your brush runs out of paint, they get smaller and smaller. So that's good, it's doing the random work that we need. Now if you use the brush end, that works too. They're just usually not exactly circular. They're sometimes kind of slightly oval shaped. Sometimes when I first dip the, the handle in the paint, it picks up a big glob. So I'll dab it down on the palette a couple times just to knock off any excess. Make sure you do those through the headlight. Don't worry about going over the tree yet, but do go over the truck. You decide if you want a blizzard or <laughs> just a gentle snowfall. Make sure you put some on the ground too. They'll show up because they're nice pure white against this sort of bluish snow. So you get the general idea. You can continue adding these. You can add it later after the video is over. But you know what to do. I'm gonna wipe off the handle. Do remember to wipe off the handle of your brush because sometimes a big glob will dry there and then it just gets enormous as you do more of this sort of painting. So we do this for stars too. 
And uh, so I do try to remember to wipe off the handle of the brush. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to our tree here. Um, I have these fun little star-shaped lights on here. I'm gonna show you on paper real fast how I do them. I'm gonna use a color that stands out against the paper for you to see, so I'll use, uh, I'll just use blue. So first what I do for these, I draw a little dot, smaller than the little decorations on your tree. And then I go from the center up and down and out. If you go from the center outward, you end up with nice pointy ends. So if I were to go from the edges inward, you can see the difference. It's real blunt on the edge. But if you go from the center out, use a really light pressure flicking motion, literally three hairs and some air, as Bob Ross says. And then I just continue going around until I get a sparkly shape that I like. It is kind of fun to keep the the first cross that you put in, this, 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 and this, longer, and then have these middle ones be a little shorter. So it gives it kind of that Christmas star sort of look. So I'm gonna use white paint. If your little ornaments are still wet, just work around and be careful because they will turn pink. Your little star lights that we put on now are gonna turn pink. So I just pick where I want it to go. Up, down, side, side, flick, 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 flick. There, so cute, so easy. Circle, up, down, side, side, flick, 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 flick. And this one went over an ornament and that's totally fine if the ornament's dry. If you don't like these, just leave them off. There's, I mean, it's it's an optional thing. I didn't have to put it on there. It just adds a bit of sparkle to the tree. And these can be different sizes. You can make some bigger and some smaller. It's up to you. That one looks like a sea urchin. promise we're almost done. This is one of the longer paintings. When I put it on the schedule, some of my artists weren't super thrilled because they don't love teaching how long it is. <laughs> and it sold out really fast. All right, so this is a good amount of these, as I do one more. You could even make some that like go off into the sky, like maybe, you know, I could just totally go extra here. If you're really good at these and feel comfortable doing them, you could make it like look like they're kind of magically coming from the moon. I have another painting that is done this way. It's actually this one, the in-studio version, and it has like a whole row of those that kind of comes up. That's where I'm getting that idea from. You get fast at them. <laughs> so there we go. That's that. Let's get the yellow lights on the tree and then we will be finished. So these are tiny little yellow lights. You might use the, the brush end for this because they're so small. As long as you load up your brush with a nice glob of the yellow, you literally should just have to touch the brush to the tree and it leaves a little dot without mushing it down. I like it to look like one of those trees where every single little tree branch is wrapped with lights. That's why I put a ton on here. This will give it some cool sparkle. And if your tree was kind of disappearing into the background and looking very boring like mine was, this is gonna bring it back to life.
I think I've got it. Super cute. Wish I had a little better lighting here to show it off, but maybe on your end it looks okay. Here we go. Very fun. Driving off to deliver the Christmas tree or bringing it home. So at this point I sign my painting. I'll usually just uh, initial it in one of the lower corners. Maybe I'll use blue. Littlest brush. I keep my signature pretty small. I usually just do some kind of loopy version of my initials. Didn't sign this one apparently. <laughs> but here it is. And I hope you guys enjoyed painting it. Kind of a long painting. But worth it in the end with all those fun details. And it's ready to hang. You can paint the edges if you want. Just paint them kind of like mix the white and blue with a tiny touch of black and you can paint around the sides if you want or just even paint them solid white or solid black works too or even red um i hope you guys had fun i definitely did it's always fun to revisit a painting a year later and and see uh, how things have changed up a bit with how i use the brush because things are always changing but i'm gonna go back now so i can say goodbye hope you guys had a great time i think i already said that a million times but Happy holidays to you guys. And I'd love to see your paintings. You can post them um, if you are on Facebook. We have a private group that's called Go Box Art Crate. And it's a group, not a business page. And you can request to join. And a lot of my people, students and, and people who get our subscription box will post their paintings there and we applaud them and it's really fun. So feel free to post your paint, join the group and post your painting there. And if you want to do this on a regular basis, we do have a wonderful subscription box we've been doing for over a year. And it's two projects a month. Sometimes there are these wood boards. Like this is one of the projects for December that we're doing in the subscription box. The lighting is bad. And uh, then we have a canvas painting to one of Paul's landscapes. So that, you can find all of that uh, via vinego.com. But if you just go direct to gobox.com, you can see information on our subscription box and the other individual fun kits that we have. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'd love to see your paintings and happy holidays.